Hello YouTube, Liberal fan in Japan here, the Miyazaki man, Sai. Alrighty, then Zubimendi's saga never ends. He's told Estadio Deportivo, a local outlet in Spain, that he wants Liverpool to revive a move for him in January. Why? Because Real Sociedad are sitting 16th in the table. Four points from the opening six games, had a rough, rough start. Ruben de Lomand and Mikel Marino obviously left. There's not much left at Real Sociedad. They're not turning it on. Takafuzu Kuba hasn't had a great start to the season. Zubimendi can't get a foothold in the midfield as well. But saying that, the fact that he now would play understudy to Ryan Juro Gravenberg, who's one of the best sixes in the world. Will he still want to come? Maybe he wants to learn from Special Gravy how he turns on that saucy performance. I'm wearing the Champions League trackie from last opening because we're dominating in the Champions League. He's seen that and he wants to be a part of that. Will we go back for Martin Zubimendi? Some fans are like, nah, screw him. Leave him there. Let him rot. He rejected us once, not twice. Not gonna happen. Nah, nah, nah. Michael Edwards, Richard Hughes have done their homework. This was a player that they felt would complement the Liverpool squad as well. I think if there is an option to go for him and he declares his undying loyalty for Liverpool you know it's understandable he didn't want to leave his hometown club didn't want to force a move for example if Real Sociedad play ball if Real Sociedad do play ball then it's potentially a move that could happen but do we even need him anymore considering that Graven Birch is the ultimate deep line playmaker who could play further forward in eight as well so that's something to explore because Martin Zubimendi could allow Graven Birch to go in the eight position but get this Zubimendi and Graven Birch in the base and McAllister in the ten Rotating with Soberslai and Harvey Elliott. That's a tasty conundrum as well, right? And don't for one moment think that Martin Zubimendi's entry into the squad means Wataru Endo is out because this is a game of attributes and personas. Still, in a congested midfield, you need a destroyer. You need a hard nut. You need someone to crunch and G up the fans and get them on your feet. Endo is perfect for that, as well as leading the youngsters through those early cup ties. An experienced head that never complains. Relatively low wage, and you wouldn't get much transfer fee from anyway. Wataru Endo stays, and what a compliment of midfielders for that deep lying role. Zubamendi as a ball playing tempo maestro, a metronome in the base. Graven Birch as the multifaceted all around libero of your dreams in front of defense that can do a bit of everything. Long passes aplomb. Graven Birch's long passes are better than Zubamendi. Zubamendi is a short ball playing genius like a Busquets, right? Positional awareness, game intelligence. He would add something that a metronome. Motaru Endo, an enforcer, a DM, an anchorman, a defensive midfielder who can drop into the centre-back roles as well as cover the whips as he played full-back and centre-back early in career as well. And McAllister, why not? Put him in the six as well, double pivot. It looks very, very flexible. And what this also allows us to do, right, is we don't really need a centre-back that desperately considering that Kanate and Van Dijk are starting almost every game. Now, Van Dijk will probably start 99% of games. Kanate is having an extended run. Hopefully, he can get away from those injuries because of slot style football and slot's training regime and all of the um, plans in the background. We don't want another Ledley King situation. We need to manage him. I'm sure slot has it under control. But the fact that Joe Gomez is still here. He's never let us down. He plays centre-back. He plays left-back. He plays right-back. He's homegrown as well. And Jarrell Kwanzaa will be chomping at the bit to get back into the lineup as well. We have the cover for centre-back. Traditionally, every squad goes with four first-team centre-backs and some in the rotation, in and behind, where it's a Maranello, whether it's Wataru Endo, any player can slot in there as a fifth choice on any given days. In fact, that plethora of options at centre-back will definitely get us through to at least January, right? And I did say one of the Reds' signings for the summer would definitely be a winger, 100% be a winger. I put my name and stake on that, the winger Wonderland, because Arna Slot loves his complimentary dish of delicious wingers running amok. And Federico Chiesa coming in, there is our Mo Salah backup right there. Because even though he can play on the left, he has played on the left a lot, he can play on the right as well. And Shadow Striker, but he prefers the wing. Salah and Chiesa behind him. That is a lot more tasty than Salah and Elliot, because Elliot really should go on inside into the number 10 position, in the Mazala positions, even on the 8 positions on occasion as well. So, if we don't go for Martin Zubamendi, where do we align our budget? Now, the big question is, will Darwin Nunes come to prominence in an Arna slot slot machine system? My prediction is still yes, because he has more raw tools than Santiago Jimenez at Feyenoord. He is of that high caliber, of a price point. He's never complains. He's happy on the bench. He's a rotation option at the moment because of Diogo Jota's game intelligence. But the only reason I think Diogo Jota is starting right now, even though he's not completely on form, Game intelligence and pressing. His pressing game is monstrous. He leads to press from the front. Diogo Jota can shoot from both feet. And Arna Slot's had a longer time to work with Diogo Jota as a slot as well. Nunes came back late from international duty. We're still going to have to find a system that fully 
fully complements Darwin Nunes and gets the most out of him. He's a willing runner. He has a good shot as well. His error process is not bad. He's got great stamina. He'll keep the defense occupied for all 90 minutes, but it's a different style of play. We have to release him earlier on the shoulder and get players in and amongst him. And in the number 10 position, a Sober Sly and Elliot, especially an Elliot and a McAllister and a Salah in half space on the right, should be able to thread Nunes through. Now, Nunes will have a big part to play this season. He's part of the Liverpool squad and we will utilise him. There's no way we wouldn't utilise a 70, 80 million pound striker. And he's shown before he has the capability to get in those goal scoring opportunities again and again right even though he didn't convert last season it's about getting him in between the posts and better goal scoring opportunities he can be a poacher he's got raw physical attributes maybe not the most game intelligent but he makes intelligent runs let's do a dedicated video on darwin nunez the marmite player at the moment love him or hate him but let's get back to martin zubermendi will liverpool go back for martin zubermendi in the January transfer window, for I think a few things here. Ultimately, will there be injuries before the January transfer window? Will we want to assign a portion of the budget towards some other position, knowing that Graven Birch and Endo and McAllister is sufficient cover with Tyler Morton? Don't forget, he's still hanging around Liverpool as well. And he will definitely appear in all of the cup games because he is a technical player at the base of midfield who can roam into the eight as well. So it's about where Liverpool prioritising the budget. But keep in mind as well, Martin Zubermendi may not have been the only defensive midfielder on the list. In the absence of signing Martin Zubermendi, who Slot has identified as someone who could complement the squad and add attributes to the squad that we don't have in Endo or McAllister or in Greven Birch, maybe they didn't go back in for a defensive midfielder because the one we wanted was not available. Now, I keep saying Adam Wharton. Adam Wharton at Crystal Palace has come through Crystal Palace, shown he's a Premier League level player, shown he's an international level player as well. Really good mentality, really good positional sense, homegrown and English. He's the type of signing that I think Liverpool do splash the cash for. And Crystal Palace were expecting to lose Eberetra Eze, right? Who in fantasy football really should be scoring higher. I can't believe they gave Mateta the, the penalty. It's between Mateta and Eze. What is all that about? Choose your dedicated penalty taker. I digress just a little bit. They were expecting to lose Ebrecht Eze. They lost Michael Alise to Bayern Munich. There was no way they are going to sell Adam Morton. But with their performances floundering in the Premier League this season, they might be open to selling him to get that firepower, to score the goals, to keep them away from relegation. Right. So if he becomes available, Liverpool, without a, bit, without a doubt, now have the budget to go for him, to have a big play for him, to have you know splash the cash for him. Um, obviously, they were interested in Joe Gomez in the past, but actually it's still a deal that can be done there. But I think Joe Gomez's value to the squad is invaluable he's underrated he's loyal never complains knows the Liverpool system very popular everyone loves Joey especially Van Dyke. he had a title winning season next to Van Dyke. he can cover the whole back line and invert into the pivot six as well so Joe Gomez valuable player I don't think he'll be involved in Adam Morton deal unless for example he wants to go because he wants to stake his claim in the England lineup, you know, under Lee Carsley or uh, whichever new manager comes into place. We wouldn't begrudge him that because Joe Gomez has earned the right to play through loyalty. But if he stays at Liverpool, the more the merrier. If Adam Wharton isn't the target, then will we explore someone like Alan Varela, who Porto did not want to release, right? Who did not make a fuss about coming, who Liverpool may not have even moved for as well. We are linked towards the end of the transfer window. But ultimately, we will see Liverpool obtain the player and target the player that they've done their homework on, that they've done their research on, that they really wanted to get in the Arsenal system. And it's not just random names you can pluck out in the defensive midfield position and put them into Liverpool team to perform. I told you, despite what other content creators, despite what the media told you, I told you Yusuf Fofana was not good enough for Liverpool. He would never be a target for Liverpool. He's so limited. His passing is no good and he doesn't do it under pressure as well. And he's protected in the France national team. He was not good enough and you saw against AC Milan and look at the Milan fans, right? Look at the Milan fan message boards and the content creators as well telling you Yusuf Fofana underperformed, not physical enough, not fit enough, ball playing skills, not there either. I told you Yusuf Fofana wasn't good enough. And I'm still sticking to my guns. It's a net positive that we didn't go for an emergency six having Zubamendi reject us for the fact that Ryan Graven Birch now knows he's number one, got full support, got full confidence and he knows get, get the game playing minutes as well. And this has given Arnestock the opportunity to see and not just see the players in pre-season do his own analysis and judgment on the players but see how the players perform in the real matches under real pressure situations when something is properly on the line right the double-edged sword of perform on the day and you play don't perform or don't perform in training and you won't play he can see how the players react how they get on with each other how they confront adversity how they can step up and perform for him how they can clutch victory out of the jaws of defeat or save defeat by saving goal line clearance or running the ass off back to get behind the ball within five seconds that kind of thing 
He's had a proper, proper opportunity now. Now the league started, now the Champions League started. And we won, by the way, Champions League. We are the champions. I never get over the fact that we belong in Champions League every season. What were we doing last season in Europa League? I don't know. Digress just a little bit. He has seen all of the players up, up front and personal and in the pressured situations. Now, enough to make a judgment, to make the judgment on Wataru Endo, on Jarrell Kwanza, on Darwin and Nunes. All of the players in the squad on Lucho Diaz and what he wants in his team, in his squad, available as options. Let's see in the cup fixtures who he goes with as well. I expect there's going to be places for Cody Gakpo, Darwin Nunes, Tyler Morton, Wataru Endo as well. Chiesa, oh my goodness, I can't believe we've got Federico Chiesa in the squad. But things are looking up because there's no desperate need, no desperate need to get Martin Zubimendi now that Graven Birch has come to the fore and shown his absolute quality as a like for like next to Jude Bellingham in the Wonder Kid rankings. He really deserves it. He, he's he been scouted since a young age. We knew he had the ability there. Ajax to Bayern Munich to Liverpool is not a bar, bad pathway, right? And Arne Slot now can add the lick of paint on top because we've got Mamash Davili coming in for Alison Becker. But it's not for Alison Becker, it's for Queef Kelleher because there we go. Queef Kelleher will leave to pass this new, whether it's January or, or the summer. He's not kicked up a fuss. He's just been honest. And, you know, you can't begrudge him that as well. We have enough players no one can say that our squad isn't filled with enough players and positions people may argue for quality and sure it comes back down to what Simicast and Robertson on left back Endo in defensive midfield the Connor Bradley Trent Alexander-Arnold conundrum especially with Trent's contract Van Dijk's contract situation as well Mo Salah's contract situations but the contract situations kind of resolve themselves in due time you can't rush these things there's no transfer window for the contract situation and it doesn't matter whether you get to january and they can sign a pre-contract if they had the intention of renewing or even are open to renewing then it doesn't matter about january they will sit down at the table with liverpool see the terms and conditions and make sure it's right for everyone the club the player the player's family their career etc and they'll come to a decision whether it's now in a few weeks time or in january or post january as well you can't rush these things you can't force them to do anything it'll naturally go with the flow and happen when it's meant to happen. Do you remember FSG gave Jurgen Klopp the space to decide whether he wanted to renew? And ultimately, he came to FSG and said, I wish to renew the contract. I think it's similar in the way that we're showing respect to Van Dijk, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Mo Salah, giving them the space and room to decide their future. And when they're happy to come to the table as well, then we'll discuss terms. When their agent wants to present the the fees and the payment structures and the clauses that they require, then Liverpool are willing to negotiate rather than Liverpool saying, hang on, how much do you want here? Is it 400k you want? 300k you want? Do you want to guarantee 80% of starting matches, etc.? I don't think Liverpool will force the issue. I think Liverpool will be respectful and courteous and continually talk through the agent to let the players concentrate on the important matches and say, look, we're happy to start negotiations anytime. Give me a rough ballpark figure. We'll go from there. And then when the agents get in touch with Liverpool and then, you know, commence the contract negotiations you know it's in good hands michael edwards richard hughes they're the best in the business know what they're doing you can't say that fsg have screwed up by getting the best in the business and then because they didn't do what you wanted they must suck they must be crap no you've got to trust them one way or the other that they're doing the right thing for liverpool because that's what they employed to do Anywho, that's all I wanted to say. This uh, Zuba Mendy deal, who knows if it's reliable or not. He must be second-guessing Real Sociedad's prospects, you know, from Champions League contenders to in the dire, in the muck, relegation candidates, bad start to the season, no firepower, no control in midfield, leaky defence as well. Martin Zuba Mendy, has he blown this chance? Liverpool don't come often, and especially if you reject them in public, come around again to get them. And even if they did get him, right, he's an alternative option to Ryan Graham Birch, and you can't bench Ryan Graham Birch. And a lot of people are calling for Ryan Graham Birch to be pushed in the eighth position. Well, considering he's dominated the game from the sixth position, there's no way to say that he'll dominate the game in the same way in the eighth position because he'll be further afield into the opposition's press where they have more opportunity to close them down and press him whereas in that sixth position he has license to roam in the half spaces there to pick up the ball and do what he needs to do and his long passing game has come up leaps and bounds his confidence his ability i think long term he's a hybrid six and eight in the way that McAllister is a hybrid six eight ten and Sobersly is a hybrid eight and ten and right winger <laughs> you see what i mean um yeah i want to open some new kit i like this kit but as always i've got loads and loads of kit to go through and look at this this is like some kind of giant shoe box mercali japan as well make sure to check out my affiliate link in zen market if you go to zen market it's a proxy service that ships all japan goods worldwide you can buy any japan goods including food but type in lfc when um searching for liverpool and you can find the same goodies that i i have at the moment and this is where i buy all my vintage goods what in the world 
It's not. It's not Liverpool kit. It's some weed merch. <laughs> some kind of a anime pillow. Okay, waifus to the side. This looks more promising. This looks more promising as a kit. Has a kashin there. Has a kashin means embarrassing, but I'm never embarrassing. I love the waifus, and I'm not afraid to say it. You know I love the waifus. <laughs> the weeb plastic. Okay, let's see what's in this one. Second time lucky. Nope. It's a bag in a bag. So, third time lucky. Probably kit though, isn't it? It is. Something's happened here. <laughs> is this not the same kit? Wait a minute. It's the same kit, except for this one. Comes with the bottoms as well. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but this whole thing together, I know this for a fact cost like 7,800 quid, which is... Quid? No, 7,800 yen. Blimey, 7,800 quid. 7,800 yen, which is roughly, roughly 40 quid for the whole set. That's fantastic. But the fact that I've got two of them, right? It's going to work out in your favour and complete coincidence. That means I'll be giving away this top. Maybe that top, this top, one of the two. Doesn't matter, they're the same thing, right? And... The Wind Tracker Tracky hoodie because this came in a set as well. So, especially to the members, right? Thank you so much for supporting the channels. We'll get into the member section in just a second. But I'm going to do the surprise Wheel of Glory. All the members' names will go in a wheel very, very shortly. When I get to 100 members, especially, we'll do loads and loads of giveaways. I've got 50 Liverpool items to give away. Also, Fancy Football, the winner of that gets a Liverpool um, kit merch as well. And in the Discord, join the Discord. I'm doing so many giveaways for you guys as well. And a goodies bundle as well. But just I just want to say, my man, the little man, Mushroom Boy Ato, his Undokai, the sports day, is coming up this Saturday. <laughs> Battle Royale tug of war. <laughs> it would mean the world to him and all the Liverpool fans worldwide enjoying the Liverpool Fan in Japan channel. Give him a big Gambare! Gambare means go for it, cheering him on. Gambare Eito, Gambare Eito kun. You could even wear your Liverpool kit. You can send me a five second clip if you want on Discord. Go to Discord, add me as a friend. You can DM me directly. I love talking to all you guys. You guys are the best, by the way. I talked to a lot of the members already. DM in, in Discord and in the channels. DM me a five second clip of saying Gambare Eito, go for Eito, or Ikuzo Eito, but maybe just Gambare Eito kun. And he will be so, so happy. And I tell you what, I'll let Eito choose the most inspiring video, the person that he liked seeing in those video clips. And I'll send you, I'll send you some goodies as well as a Domo Arigato because Eito is the pride and joy of the Momogumi class, the peach class, right? He's the sportsman, he's the athlete, he's superior. Genetically superior, I'd like to say. <laughs> Eito, yes! <laughs> Who knows? But I think he'll win. I think he'll win those races and I'll show it to him before Saturday. This is why I'm making the video today. I'm announcing it now. So if you've got some time, five seconds before Saturday, send me a short clip saying Gambare Eito kun! Sports day is called Undokai. If you want to say Undokai, you can do. But yeah, Gambare Eito will do. Thank you, everyone. Mina-san. Thank you, everyone, so much. Miyazaki man. Ichiban. Miyazaki gan. Miyazaki gan means the army is growing. Really enjoying the community we're building. You guys are awesome. You guys are the best. I'm expanding the Discord all the time. Let's talk about transfers. Let's talk about lineups. Let's talk about match day. Let's talk about Liverpool kit. Let's talk about Liverpool legends. Let's talk about the whole shebang. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Jane means ciao. Liverpool fan in Japan